Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be going over our daily engineering dry sum system for the LS3. We'll give you guys a little comparison about what a dry sum system is versus a wet sum. Traditionally in most, I would say 90% of cars, you have what's called a wet sum system. You have a big oil pan at the bottom of the motor that holds all of your oil. There's a oil pump at the front of your engine, pickup tube, spins, sucks up the oil, shoots it in your car. For racing, this can be bad because the oil sits, I would say, in the sump. And it can slosh around at loads. You can go forward, back, and even for a split second, if you have oil starvation, that causes rod bearings to spin and other bad things. So in the motorsports world, you have what's called a dry sump system. This is a billet dry sump pan. And what this does is it sits extremely shallow on the bottom of the motor, and it doesn't hold any oil. All of the oil is held in this remote reservoir. It's gonna sit elsewhere in the vehicle. And what this does is, no matter what you're doing in the car, you're going crazy, this thing filled with oil is never not gonna have oil at the bottom. Oil comes out of this and is fed through an exterior pump. So this is gonna be belt driven, it's gonna sit outside the car. And what this does is it sucks in the oil from this reservoir, shoots high pressure, and goes in the back of the motor. Traditionally on an LS, you have the oil pump at the front, and it pumps oil back to the barbell, then it goes down through a filter, back up into the motor. We're skipping all of that, and we're putting our filter outside of the motor. This will just be in the engine bay somewhere else. You have high pressure oil, now we're just shooting it into the engine. Once it goes to the head and the bearings, it falls down like normal. But instead of sitting in the pan, this pan is constantly under suction from the pump. So there's a bunch of baffles in here. You can see the oil comes in, and then it gets sucked through all of these. So this is a stage three kit. We have two suctions and one pressure. If you have turbos or other things, you can run stage fours or fives, and you can have multiple pressures to feed turbos and stuff. But this is an NA, so we're just running a stage three. So the oil gets sucked out through all of these, comes out these two holes, which is where the oil pump sits. So once it's sucked out, it's pushed back, it goes back into the top of the reservoir. Unlike normally, you have crank cable crankcase pressure and things like that. With the dry sump system, we won't have any crankcase pressure. Actually, the, the engine's gonna be under a vacuum 100% of its life. We run a vacuum regulator on the valve cover so that it doesn't have too much suction. Too much suction you can fold in seals and things like that. It's bad, so we'll regulate that with the pressure regulator. Once it's back into the tank, you'd have like your normal catch can setup, like what we ran before. This is just gonna vent from the top so yeah, we'll run a normal catch can system off the dry sum tank. This for us is gonna be located towards the back of the car above the fuel tank on the passenger side. I have some brackets in the car, I'll show you that after. With this setup, we need to run an ATI front damper and a different hub assembly. This hub assembly has the gear, which drives the belt, which spins this cog, and this is going to be spinny spin spin to spin the pump. What else? We got a sweet ATI damper, you have a pressure fitting because we're skipping the whole ordinary pump. We leave the front of the motor exactly the same. You normally pump through to the back, and went through the filter, like I said before. This is the fitting that goes on the back of the block to skip all of that. We got expensive ARP bolts. This is a huge bolt. This is for the front crank. And we're gonna be running a single oil cooler. Before in my life, I had N54 issues, so she ran at a bajillion degrees. I needed multiple coolers. With the dry sump system, it will tend to run more cool because the engine is a billion degrees, and instead of all that oil being in a hot pan attached to that, we're moving that all the way over here. It naturally, it will run a little bit cooler, so we're just gonna have to run this one single oil pump. Yeah, other than that, I got the ATI kit, so we gotta install it, so let's get to installing. Okay, Kyle assured me I was using it right, even though this looks like a long dong. Install the front hub first. So this one has a key. Normally I think this is the hole where your stock oil pump assembly would send the earls. normal once you get to here now I guess. What does this do? Is it pushing it in? This is how to like it like centers it and then this part threads into the crank okay. itself and once it's in there if you rotate it 
applications. We can put this part flush with here. And now, what this is going to do, this is going to move the whole damper in unison, so that way we don't bind it up or do anything stupid. All right, now that we got the front hub on, we can take these bolts and snug down the front cover. And then we'll spin it over and we will put the oil pan on. Oil pan gasket, we can put some RTVs, these little cracks. front on. Now, I think we need to put the pump on. All right, we quickly jump through this on, pretty easy. Just tighten those three bolts. Now we have Sean over there. He's doing some welding. For the dry sump tank, we drilled two holes in the side. We're gonna weld on these aluminum bungs and we're gonna put a 90 degree. We'll put a clear tube in there and we'll use it as a gauge, I guess, to know a level. It's, it's a level, it's a sight, sight tube. That's what I was trying to think of. That will be nice. You get the point. All right, so like I was saying, while Sean was welding, I had him weld these two on. We're gonna put just a clear tube in here and we'll use this as a sight tube. So we can roughly know how much is actually in here. We're supposed to fill this three quarters of the way up. So this will be about two gallons worth of oil in this system alone. Now let's go pop it in the vehicle. I got the brackets already in there. I hear Clayton doing burnouts or something. You're supposed by. to go snowmobiling. I was supposed to go snowmobiling, but I forgot everything. Classic. All right, so this is where this is gonna live. The two brackets on the firewall. I'll do this first. Putting this in is not really the easiest thing. Super snug so far. I know, I know, I know, I know I'm here. Sup? I'm the fuck one lawyer right here. <laughs> All right, how much has changed? We got the tank mounted in the car. We got the front end basically done where we need to. I threw on these stands. It's time to pick up the engine, plop it on the ground. We are going to install the flywheel, adapter plate, and our 8 HP trans. Then I think time to actually go in the vehicle. We might get this thing in tonight. We'll go over, I got engine mounts, headers, all of the, uh, all of the LS E9X stuff. We'll go over that more in detail when we get it all bolted on the car. For now, I gotta use these stands so I can get the engine on the ground to install the trans. Thank you. 
Yeah, I was looking at it upside down, so I was like, what's this? Five, seven. Oh, you're shit. I mean, seven. Yeah. I was like, what does that even mean? And I was like, that's pretty funny, man. Well, it actually works out. Upside down. Oh, yeah, it's totally moving right with everything, just like it should. Yeah, I don't know if it's the blocker would actually do something, or if it's just because it's oh, I didn't even block. Yeah, 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 I yeah, put it on my side. I almost have a mid-engine car. You should have just one did cylinder a... away from just having to be mid-engine. You should have just did like a Viper motor. Yeah, you had the room. Somewhat. You get at a 10.4 liters of no horsepower. Okay, engine went in and out a few times, but we're pretty happy with the position now. We got plenty of clearances to the firewall and everything. You check out the engine mounts. These fit super well. So we milled down the rev shift mount just a little bit, just to lower the engine and vehicle. We can do that because of the dry sump. All the drive line angles are good. The engine's sitting at 1.7 degrees down. Both sides fit well. Now we're gonna drop the headers in. So again, these are Michael Page's LSC 90X headers. One and seven eighths long tube, nice collector, pretty nice headers. Nothing crazy, nothing super special. They're not equal length, but it's basically impossible to get equal length in there. We did add the V-band clamp to the end. A thousand percent worth doing if you are doing the swap. We start with everyone's favorite side first to show clearances to the steering rack. So the V-band, just drop this. Straight down in. Bada bing, bada bing. You see, we got great clearance to the firewall. The only part we did some grinding on was the adapter plate, which we kind of expected. This is designed for your standard LS with 4L80 or normal transmission. So we had to make a little bit of clearances on the adapter plate, but that is nothing we haven't had to do before. Now, if I can line this up right, put the steering shaft in. Voila. This is an E92 M3 steering rack. E92 M3 rack has a better ratio, makes your steering wheel feel a lot better. It also has this little dongle on it because the E92 M3 had a V8, it definitely helps with the V8 headers. I'm pretty sure his clears the normal steering rack as well, but this just helps with additional clearance. We're super happy with LSE 90. This stuff just really makes the swap super easy. Mike is redoing the engine mounts on the hatchback. So even if you, are swapping this or, or swapping a car. Making engine mounts just kind of sucks. You gotta do it more than once because usually the first time isn't sweet or it's not perfect. Your angles aren't always right the first time. So Mike's redoing his because of that reason. So because of LSE 90X with the headers, with the engine mount, it just makes the swap tremendously easy. It saves countless hours and really it's super affordable. It's totally worth spending the thousand bucks. It will save you that and the 20 hours worth of work you would have to do. All right, just for Kendra, we'll put this side in as well. I am using the heat shield and stuff on this side. I ordered an E92 M3 heat shield for the other side, just because we know we're gonna bake things in there. Passenger side, I guess easier, I would say, but that's only because there's no steering rack. And yeah, I guess after we get this side in, we can go underneath the car and I'll show you what we're gonna do for the rest of the exhaust. All right, easy. Plenty of clearances everywhere. You can get your hand all around. Now let's go underneath the car. All right, we're underneath the car. Headers fit well with the V-band. That's nice. These drop downs used to be my old flat floor. So that is going to be really nice for us. We can keep the flat floor. Headers are a little bit different side to side because most people have the fuel lines and brake lines and everything like that. I don't have any of that junk, so it is what it is. But we're gonna do, we're gonna go from the three inch circle to an oval almost immediately. Come back, single X pipe. Don't think it's gonna fit through here, but I haven't run one of these for years, so we'll delete that. We're gonna turn up in here where I used to have the fuel tank on this side because I'm running the half fuel tank. And we're gonna cut out this part of the body and we're gonna dump through the side skirt. Why I'm doing that is because 
I don't want to have to fit two big holes right here and go out the back. It's more steel, it's heavier that way. This is shorter and lighter. Also, I want the diffuser to be as close to the diff as humanly possible. And I want to get the volume expansion that I can underneath both control arms. So to do that, we're going to dump the exhaust out that way. I'm not making the exhaust today, but I am going to go in CAD and start modeling it so I know what to order.